Hello, our topic is 17 vibration and the alter ego. So we're going to learn about another way that 17 vibration gets expressed, that it can get expressed as what we can call an alter ego. This is especially common when Uranus and Neptune are involved with other planets in the 17 vibration. So first thing, let's go over some basic ideas of what 17 vibration is and why 17 vibration can get expressed as an alter ego. Then we'll review a little bit more about what we mean by alter ego. And then let's see some charts and how the 17 vibration can become an important part of why a person develops an alter ego. So what is 17 vibration? It's interest in the stories of other people. That's the basic fact. Stories that are outside the narrative of whatever you grew up with. So how do we experience stories, narratives that are outside the, the domain of what we were brought up with? Theater, especially acting. Acting is a wonderful 17 vibration activity because 17 vibration wants to really feel these different stories. Well, what better way to feel a different story, to experience it, than to enact it? also literature in general, and empathy. People who just listen carefully, are very interested in what you're saying, and can get on the same wavelength with the person that they're listening to. These are all 17 vibration experiences. Now, as we started using 17 vibration charts with our clients, with analyzing famous people and so on, we noticed an additional thing. Well, it's I guess you could say it's additional, it's, it's, it's just a minor adjustment to the idea of acting, which is musical performance. So when someone is a rock singer or a pop singer or any kind of singer, that's a kind of performance that's very similar to acting. We don't call it acting. You're not, you know, enacting a role with a script and different characters in a storyline. But the performer is enacting the story of what they're singing about. Both acting and performing are improved, or we could say enhanced, by your ability to get swept away with the feeling, with the story. To step outside whatever mood, whatever personality you have, and step into the role of the character in the movie or the story of what you're singing, right? Because if you're singing a story about, you know, whatever, being happy and dancing in the street or whatever, can that mood, that feeling, can it just sweep over you? Well, one thing, it's not the only thing in astrology that helps you get swept away by whatever mood is, is emerging and so that you're not clinging to your own individual self, that you're more fluid and able to just flow into a different configuration. It's not just that your, your feelings are changing, but you're getting reconfigured. That's what happens with the actor. You're becoming a different person. And it also happens in performance. You're becoming that particular performer, what that performer's persona and life and way. Very often people have a stage name. So whether you have a stage name or not, or they change their name, there's some different being, some different personality emerges. That emerging of a different personality is often the 17 vibration. If you have Uranus and Neptune in that large 17 vibration, there's a feeling of wanting to enter a feeling of magic, of a fairyland, of some romantic way of being, something out of the humdrum everyday life that you're in. And it really enhances this, the tendency to turn on a kind of magical light switch, something exciting, fresh and exhilarating in this alternative way of being. So I've made a, a video some time ago about uh, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison. These are examples of three performers who change, they transform 
uh, to a large extent when they get on stage. So they get on stage and something different comes out. Some people, I remember uh, Joni Mitchell, the singer, uh, became friends with Jimi Hendrix and she said that Jimi Hendrix is a very kind, quiet, sensitive, sincere person. So he would gets on stage and he cuts loose and a different kind of personality emerges. So those people who have a different personality uh, embrace a whole different way of being, or maybe it's not completely different, but largely different in a different context. This is what we're I'm calling an alter ego, an alternative way. And 17 Vibe inclines to have these alternative personalities. So you can think about somebody, somebody who's very, very consistent that you know, what you see is what you get. That you see them in different environments. They're, they're very consistent. They're much the same. Probably not a big 17 vibration configuration going on or it's expressed some other way in their lives. But when you see that, very likely strong 17 vibration configuration is involved. So what I'm really saying here is that when we talk about acting, what we need to do is expand our range of thoughts about acting. Acting is sometimes also performing and it's also sometimes an enactment, an alternative uh, personality, an alter ego that's not necessarily a role that you are performing in a play. It can be a role that you're performing in your life separate from your usual role. So the tutorial video I made uh, a few years ago, it's called The 17th Harmonic Charts of Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison. And you'll find it here at astrologydc.com under the Rock and Roll Musicians and also under the Aspects and Vibrational Charts sections if you want to go watch that. That video is uh, where I explain how the 17th vibration becomes prominent in some performers, very similar to acting. And in this video, we're showing how especially two additional performers who have the strong alter ego also have the strong 17 vibration chart. Um, so let me just read this middle paragraph. The 17 vibe can be swept away by a feeling that is not consistent with the feelings, attitudes, and behaviors in their, quote, default mode. The 17 vibe inclines to a bit of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde transformation. So getting swept away by an alternative way of being. Uh, just a little bit about alter ego, and then we'll start looking at the charts. Uh, alter ego means, just to quote from Wikipedia, an alternative self, which is believed to be distinct from a person's normal or true original personality. Finding one's alter ego will require finding one's other self, one with a different personality. Cicero uh, coined the term alter ego back in the first century. He described it as a second self, a trusted friend. I think that's a good uh, way of explaining it. The existence of another self was also fully recognized in the 18th century when Anton Mesmer and his followers used hypnosis to separate the alter ego. These experiments showed a behavior pattern that was distinct from the personality of the individual when he was in the waking state compared with when he was under hypnosis. So you can imagine under hypnosis, a whole different kind of personality emerges, an alter ego. The alter ego can be, have a range of differences from the main personality. We're going to look at some cases where the alter ego is not completely, absolutely different from the main ego, but you do feel this shifting of the person into a different configuration, we can call it, a different way of configuring their lives. So one example we'll look at is Karen Carpenter. Uh, who suffered from anorexia nervosa. She died when she was 32 years old from complications from the anorexia. So her public life and her private life are completely different. In her public life, she's got this silky smooth voice, almost what we people, some people call elevator music, so relaxing and peaceful, even bland, innocuous. Some people say sugar-coated to the point of being the equivalent of eating commercially made sugar-laden sweets. Well, that's a pretty harsh criticism. Maybe you like Karen Carpenter, but in any case, she's very, very mild. 
and in her personal life is nothing's mild it's like an opposite extreme like Shakespeare's play Othello with deep and painful emotions so when what you see is not what you get when there's some whole alternative way of being and also note that this silky smooth voice this angelic voice of Karen Carpenter is not completely phony it's not just a cover she has the skill, the talent, to em embrace that voice, to fill it with a spirit that moves people, with the subtlety of, uh, of intonation that comes from a deep immersion into it. And these are the symptoms of a alter ego. She's really in it while she's there. She's able to insulate herself to a large extent from the painful, depressed Karen Carpenter and invest into this alter ego. So again, when a strong alter ego is active, you may not be seeing what you get. In other words, there's some alternative part of the version you don't know about. So here's the 17th vibration for Karen Carpenter. Uranus and Neptune, ex almost exactly conjunct at 16 Cancer have two midpoint structures to both of them. We call this a midpoint isotrap. It may not seem like the most dramatic configuration in the world, just two planets making two midpoint structures, but it's huge. It's enormously powerful. Midpoint isotraps are powerful, and this one involves two planets, both Uranus and Neptune. So there it is, the ability to get swept away by the magic of the Uranus-Neptune into the world of lyrics, Mercury-Venus and the story, and Jupiter-Pluto, the grandiose, massive scale. She's a superstar out on the big stage traveling the world with her stories, with the magical way. And it just further and further insulates herself from the deep pain and anguish which is driving her to the anorexia. Okay, uh, notice there are some dashed lines here from Saturn to Uranus and Neptune. There's also a very tight sextile from the Sun. When we see things like this, we are tempted to go up to a, a higher uh, vibration of this. We can double it to go to 34 vibration. We can triple it. Tripling is good when you have sextiles and trines makes them easier to see. So let's see here, what do we do? Um, okay, we'll look at it later. Let me first introduce the two people. So we've got Karen Carpenter, 17 vibration, and the other one is Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. Now I covered both of these groups, the Carpenters and the Bee Gees in previous videos. What I'm focusing on here is the alter ego aspect of 17 vibration. Where do we see alter ego with Barry Gibb and the, the Bee Gees in general? Because they transform from a group that does these edgy kind of somber folk rock ballads, uh, ballads like Massachusetts, I Started a Joke, Words, Holiday. Do you know these songs? You can Google them if you don't. They're kind of edgy ballads, thoughtful ballads. And then they transform at some point into disco dance band. And by the way, with these um, original style, this edgy ballad stuff, they made it to the top 100. So they made a huge success, not very often into the top 10, but they were very successful. But they made a radical change in their musical style and in their message. Very radical change to this very light, happy dance music, disco music. So you will see many musicians change styles, incorporate different uh, elements into what they're doing, but rarely will you see just a, an almost complete split going from one style, one persona, one way of dressing, one way of being to a very different one. And uh, so when you have these alter ego, which ego is the real one? They're both real. Both the disc, disco dance Bee Gees is real and the early style of Bee Gees is real. At this point, the only remaining Gibb of the three Gibb brothers, the one that's alive is Barry Gibb. He's gone back to the early 
songs and redoing them in a country music or country rock style, combining with other people like Dolly Parton and Cheryl Crow. So they're all real. They all get revived at different points in the person's life um, according to which one is fulfilling the needs that are greatest at the time. Okay, so this is the 17 vibration of Barry Gibb. And just like Karen Carpenter, Uranus and Neptune are conspicuous and they are conjunct. Conjunct in the 17 vibration. Remember, 17 vibration has very little to do with the natal chart. Everything's moving 17 times faster. So this is not a generational thing like it is would be in the natal chart. It's unique to them. They both have Uranus, Neptune, conjunct. And uh, with Barry Gibb, uh, Saturn is right there with it. They're all within three and a half degrees. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Strong Uranus, Neptune. And here it's in a supersymmetry pattern where Moon is at the midpoint of Mars, Neptune, and Mars, Uranus. And then we go ahead, we take one side of this midpoint structure, the Moon to Uranus and Neptune, and Jupiter is at the midpoint of those. So that's a supersymmetry pattern. Five planets making four midpoint structures, which I show here on the side. They're very, very strong, and they involve the spontaneity, the enthusiasm of Jupiter, Uranus, Moon, Uranus, uh, setting mood, Moon, Neptune, etc. Okay. Well, we'll get into these in more detail uh, later, but first let me review what I'm proposing. What are we saying here about 17 vibration? and alter ego. Let's build it up again so that this is clear. Number one, what is our personality? What's going on? If we have an ego, which is a personality, we have another ego, another personality, maybe one pers personality is more aggressive or outgoing than the other. You know, what? how do we develop these different personalities? Well, here's a way to think of it. Both of these personalities fulfill needs of the person. They fulfill the things that are important to the person. So if you love music and you love tradition and you want to sing music that's in some tradition, etc., you'll develop habits, lifestyle, a character that fulfills your needs and interests in those areas. So the here the bottom line is my main point here. The personality develops into a coherent system in which all the various aspects of ourselves can be expre expressed and find fulfillment. In vibrational astrology, we do not see the personality. What we see are the individual motivations and drives. We'll see Venus, Uranus, Pluto, need for excitement, you know, intense expression. We'll see Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto, enthusiastic growth, wanting to get bigger, bigger success, more attention. These are needs, these are drives, these are motivations. And what happens is we develop habits, we develop routines, we develop an environment in which we live, and all of those experiences get organized into a coherent whole, and that coherent system, that network that develops, we call the personality that holds it all together. So I think of the personality as a secondary phenomenon that, that integrates and synthesizes different needs. And the reason why people develop an alter ego, one reason is because they have a set of needs and desires and motivations that's fulfilled better by a different configuration. We can think of the personality as a kind of configuration. We configure, we organize, we systematize our different interests into a coherent network. And that's the personality. Now, a strong 17 vibration means a large planetary configuration fosters the development of an alter ego because the 17 vibration wants to step outside the current ego or what's called personality. It gets tired of the current personality. It wants to step outside. If you don't have strong 17 vibration, you may not have a strong need to step into a different storyline. But once you've got strong 17 vibration, you start experiencing a different storyline by reading stories about people in different times in history or different places in the world or 
you know, different kinds of families. You know, we read stories, we, we go to, we watch movies, we travel, we interact with different cultures. 17 Vibration does all these things, and now it's got alternatives. It knows these storylines. It's experienced them. It's tasted them. It's done a dance. It's sung, it sang music. It, it did something according to a different lifestyle, a different way of organizing our world. So the 17 Vibration opens up that experience. Now it can use that experience to become wise, to understand different points of view, develop tremendous empathy, get into acting or theater, get into performing, and to develop an alter ego if it wants to. So number three, experiencing these alternative lifestyles presents one the opportunity to incorporate them into one's life. This is what actors do. Back in 2007, I did a research study and found out that there are certain planetary combinations in 17 vibration more common for actors than any other professional group. So 17 vibration can foster acting. We apply this, what we learn from that research in our consultations and we start to see more details about how the 17 vibration works, how it gets expressed through performances such as musical performances and the development of an alter ego. Point number four, in addition to the roles that one can act out on a stage, as an actor or perform on a stage as a performer, it can become a narrative story that develops and grows into an alternative to one's current life situation or what we call an alter ego, as happened with Barry Gibb and the rest of the Gibb brothers with their two different styles of music. And when you're as a Neptune are involved, we especially get this inclination to be swept away in a magical story, a fairy tale, a myth, something exciting, fresh, youthful, vibrant, something exciting, something new, to, to wake up to a new kind of story, to step outside the humdrum daily life of your normal personality. This is what Uranus, Neptune, and 17 vibration does. So for example, for Karen Carpenter, the alter ego is the velvety, sweet, romantic Karen with her velvety, sweet, angelic voice in this peaceful world that has its pains and its sorrows and its joys, but in a much more palatable way, you might say, a much more easily uh, experienced way than the extreme uh, pain which drives her to anorexia, which according to biographies was uh, triggered, you might say, or, uh, you know, fired up by uh, not getting the kind of unconditional love from her mother. And I think also she got married and within a week it was clear that the person she married was a liar and was very insincere. And um, so this feeling that she's not being loved by people who would normally love you it is a repeating a uh, very frustrating theme in her life. Okay, so, uh, but she has that velvety voice and, she, and she's got that strong 17 vibration with Uranus Neptune and she can step into an alternative world that is largely insulated from her painful personal world. So with 17 vibration, uh, and especially Uranus and Neptune, the person may adopt a new religion or style. So if you're a person who lives a life very different from the one you grew up with, and you have a different life story, a different kind of religious or spiritual perspective, not just a difference of opinion, we're not talking about thinking, we're not talking about, oh, I have a different opinion, but the actual life itself, the feeling, the tone quality, the cultural context, the whole mood, the set of assumptions. Have you embraced a different theme? Not just something in your head, something in your heart, in your soul, about who you are, about how you're living your life. Have you moved into a different set of circumstances? If so, probably you have a strong 17 vibration because it's 17 vibration that paves the way towards embracing a different way of being, 
And that different way of being can be appreciated through theater, through literature, through acting, through performing, and through having an alter ego. So the 17.5 gives the gift of growing outside one's current boundaries. Alternative ways of reconfiguring one's personality. Again, I'm looking at personality as something we configure. We instinctively configure it. We're not born with it. It's, it's built from our individual experiences and grows into this cohesive whole that pulls together the different sides of our lives. And with alter ego, the person simply has two or possibly more configurations, centers. And those centers in which the experiences are pulled together can have some overlap or little overlap. And it's 17 vibration. I don't know what's happening in full-blown schizophrenia. We're planning to do research on that this year. I don't know if 17.5 relates to that. I'm talking about more mild uh, distinctions where there's an alter ego, but it's not that the person has no awareness whatsoever. It's not like Barry Gibbs says, oh, I didn't know I used to play this edgy ballad music. No, he, he knows about it. He's playing it again. <laughs> you know, or that Karen Carpenter didn't know that she was anorexic when she was on stage. She knew, you know, etc. cetera. It, it's not as severe. And I don't know if the severity of a, a more extreme mental illness is caused by the same kind of planetary configurations or something else. We'll find out as we do the research. But these alter ego types of situations, very strongly 17 vibration. Uh, I have a bottom line here, it's very interesting. She be, Karen Carpenter develops this alternative person, the silky, sweet, voiced, uh, romantic uh, Karen Carpenter, unfortunately does not erase the other personality. So let's look at Barry Gibb uh, in a little more detail. There's his eight vibration. Before we look at 17, we'll look at his eight vibration because eight vibration tells you some very fundamental things about a person. And fundamentally, Barry Gibb is a Jupiter Uranus Pluto. That's his fundamental way of being. Uh, optimistic uh, and wants to make it big. Jupiter Pluto people, they want to make it big. They're not worrying about the details. They sometimes step on people's toes or take advantage of people. They're going big. He's excited. He's enthusiastic. He loves the attention and success. And he's able to achieve more success with disco than they did with their early style rock. Early style rock, they were in the top 100 billboard. Here they make it to the top 10 repeatedly. So it works. His Disco Barry works. It fulfills the Jupiter, the huge Jupiter. Whenever you have Jupiter like this in the eighth vibration, you have a Jupiterian person. Jupiterian person means they want to go big. <laughs> Bigger is better. And uh, the disco music goes big. So it's, it's fulfilling something that the original configuration did not fulfill, a higher level of success. Uh, the original configuration, the original uh, music done by the Bee Gees was a stepping stone. It was good. It built the platform for even a bigger level of success. Okay. Um, and so when you have an alter ego, you can draw from both personalities as needed. Now in his later years, his two brothers have died. Um, he's back to some of the original songs, doing them in a uh, folk rock or country rock kind of way, more country style. And looking at his 17 vibration in more detail, we see that Barry Gibb, the Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune means you go off in your own little world. The Bee Gees may, wrote most of their own music, almost all the music. They wrote it. They performed it. They developed their own unique style. Whether it was light, whether it was doesn't meet your standards of musical taste or not, it was them, it was their thing. Um, you know, he is a Jupiterian person. He was shooting for success. He made it to success. That, that Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, own unique dream, a difficult path. And there were a lot of difficulties, especially for his two brothers uh, on this journey. But here we see the huge, important 
uh, supersymmetry pattern. That moon is at the midpoint of Mars, Uranus, and Mars, Neptune. We see that in the midpoint structures here on the right side. Moon opposition, Uranus, Pluto, 13 minutes. Opposition, Neptune, Pluto, 50 minutes. And then we take the moon, Uranus, and the moon, Neptune, and Jupiter is in between those. So the basic idea is you add one planet, Jupiter, to these planets, you get more midpoint structures. So having this big conjunction of Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, big because it's all within uh, three and a half degrees, very, very tight, plus having the supersymmetry pattern, plus the trine from Mars to this conjunction, all of this put together means we have very, very strong 17 vibe and the possibility that he will fluidly move into a different configuration. You know, if you phrase it like that, 17 vibration means you can fluidly move into a new configuration. Are the Bee Gees able to do it? Yes, they did it. Um, so that is really a good way to think of 17 vibration. It's the gift, it's the talent behind acting, behind performing, and behind empathy to fluidly move into a different configuration. And another way is an alter ego. Here the alter ego is tied up with the stage personality versus the personal personality, which is the same dynamic with Karen Carpenter. Here's Karen Carpenter, 17 vibration, with the Uranus-Neptune conjunction, making a very large, we call midpoint isotrap. Uranus and Neptune are both at the Mercury-Venus midpoint and the Jupiter-Pluto midpoint. We show that in the tree diagrams here, very tight. Smallest orb, two minutes. Largest orb, 39 minutes. Again, Uranus-Neptune. Something vibrant, youthful, magical, exciting. Mercury-Venus with lyrics, with intelligence, with a story. Jupiter-Pluto making it big. They're superstars. The Carpenters, superstars, telling their story. Magical, alternative to the very painful, lonely self of Karen. So she fluidly moves into this different configuration. That's what the 17 vibration does because it can embrace this new story. And all the stories are within ourselves. They're just different way of configuring the basic functions that we have, the basic needs and dynamics. If we look at, if we go up an octave to 34, it, it looks a little bit different we see in the 34 vibration, Uranus and Neptune are still conjunct, and Mars, you see this in these blue, bluish, uh, bluish gray line, uh, curved arrows, that Uranus and Neptune pointing to Mars and Moon pointing to Mars, these curved arrows shown here on the right side, Mars is conjunct, Moon, Uranus midpoint, one degree, 26 minutes, and Moon, Neptune midpoint, 57 minutes. Then we go halfway between one side of it, the Mars and the Uranus-Neptune, and Saturn's right there at the Mars-Uranus and Mars-Neptune midpoint. That's what we call a pyramid. Uh, it's a, it's a supersymmetry pattern. We add one more planet, Saturn. We get more midpoint configurations. We have four midpoint, config, four midpoint structures formed out of five planets. Very, very large, powerful supersymmetry pattern in 17 vibration with the Uranus-Neptune conspicuous. Um, so whether you look at it at the 17 vibration level or the 34, and I think I go... Oh, m one more thing about this before we leave it. What does this mean? Mars, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune doing the real work, the sincere effort to get to that magic. To get to that magic. Um... This is often a kind of sacrificing, often a kind of Christian ethic or like a monk or a ministerial kind of attitude, a kind of uh, uh, Franciscan attitude, like I'll do the work needed to get there. It's very disturbing. It can be uh, very painful. Saturn or Neptune is difficult. And in fact, Karen was deeply Christian and we're not surprised. The constant rejection, apparently, that her mother uh, favored her brother, actually, and that she married this fellow and within days found out he was totally phony and a liar. She's not able to get love. Um, and she 
He is trying to be sincere. She's very, very devoutly religious. She believes in this purity and this possibility and is suffering and can't quite get there. Um, also, if we look at her eight vibe, you know, we looked at Barry Gibb, his eight vibe with the Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto, eight vibe always tells you some fundamental driving forces, Venus, Uranus, Pluto. Venus, Ur Venus tightly square Uranus and Pluto in eight vibration tells you something we didn't know about Karen Carpenter. She wanted to be in love. She wanted the excitement of being in love, the excitement of music and dance and, sur and, all, and just surprises and being alive and never being able to achieve the basic quality and rate vibration is very, very difficult. Notice that Barry Gibb with his Jupiter Uranus Pluto, he achieved it. He went big, one of the biggest stars of all time. You know, and with the disco music made it super big. He fulfilled his eight vibration needs. Karen Carpenter, she did musically with Venus Uranus Pluto but she wasn't able to get it into her personal life where she so desperately wanted it. Um, so you can see what's working and not working. When things don't work, there's a lot of pain. Look at this. What is this wild thing? <clears throat> All these blue lines and curves. This is her 51 vibration. When we triple the 17, we can see more details. And when you look at it at the 51 level, it's huge. My God, her 51 vibration chart is extremely strong. It's got a Sun, Uranus, Neptune right down the middle. Sun opposition, Uranus, Neptune. The Sun opposition, Uranus is like 18 minute orb. So the Sun activating the Uranus, Neptune means this is who she is. She wants a fairy st story. She wants a fairyland kind of thing. She wants all that stuff she's singing with her silky magical voice. She's wanting Prince Charming into her life. She's wanting this magic. Um, she sings it as she, she emanates it, but she can't quite experience it in a real way for herself in her personal life. And uh, the, the sun is at Jupiter-Pluto midpoint, showing these little arrows. And also the Uranus and Neptune are also at the Jupiter-Pluto midpoint. That's what all these arrows are showing here. And what is this Venus-Saturn? Sun is at Venus-Saturn midpoint, and Uranus-Neptune are at Venus-Saturn midpoint, and Moon is at the Pluto, Uranus and Pluto-Neptune. Anyway, it's a huge, huge uh, supersymmetry configuration. Again, the basic principle of supersymmetry is you get a midpoint structure, you add one more planet, and you get at least one more midpoint structure. All of these midpoints are all tied together in a supersymmetry configuration, and it's describing um, it's describing who she is and, and why it was so painful that she couldn't make this magical story happen. It would only happen in the song, but it would not, after she's done singing, it's not there. It's not happening. Um, so, uh, okay. And I talk here about the grandness, the Jupiter-Pluto, the sincerity, uh, it, it could never quite happen. It was emotionally crushing. Okay, let's go on to... She had the voice of an angel and she was adored by the crowds, but a personal love life with a devotion and commitment to a meaningful and purposeful life together evaded her. So the Venus-Saturn is... Well, this whole Sun-Uranus-Neptune thing is squeezed between Venus and Saturn. Venus and Saturn are sesquiquadrate. This storyline, 17 times 3, that she's, that she's uh, easily moved into, um, she's not able to bring about everything that it's trying to, to do. Okay, you know, and, and why wasn't she able to do it? Well, you know, the lack of confidence uh, stemming from, you know, the impact of her mother's attitude towards her and the way in which she took that into herself. She just wasn't able to feel right to, to attract the situation into her life. Okay, so just a little reminder about the alter ego. When, when we say alter ego, what are we talking about? We're talking about a person 
who has the ability to reconfigure themselves, to reorient themselves into a different set of qualities. And it's an alternative way of behaving. So when someone has an alternative way of behaving and a different personality from the usual one, perhaps one personality is more extroverted or boisterous or more colorful or more artistic, whatever it is, one personality is very different from the other. What this is, is it represents modifications uh, to one's personality to help fulfill desires that are not getting fulfilled by the primary personality. And everybody to some extent has an alter ego. I mean, we adjust our personalities a little bit to different circumstances, or we may adopt different um, ways of being, or we may be able to imitate things. Um, so I thought about my 17 vibration. I thought, do I have a strong 17 vibration? Have I fluidly moved into a different configuration? Absolutely. I grew up with one set of, uh, one environment with a certain set of uh, beliefs and attitudes, and I developed a, a whole different cultural context in a different part of the country. So I would say, yes, very 17 vibe, not as extreme as Barry Gibb or Karen Carpenter. There's not like two completely separate people. I do have a lot of different sides to myself. I flow into very easily that people are sometimes surprised when they find it. I also fall into like little skits, like little funny things. Like all of a sudden I'll start talking with a southern accent for no particular reason, just start doing it. And it's kind of strange. Or, you know, whatever. I have a Chinese accent. I do it. So these are like fluid moving into different styles. But it's light. I was thinking I probably have a supersymmetry pattern or trines. Nothing too extreme, but something going on, and that's exactly what's happening. So you can ask yourself, have you left the life narrative you were born into? Do you have competing life stories? Do you morph into different characters? The extent you do is the extent that 17 vibration is likely to be strong in your chart. Um, so here it is in my case, for example, I have all these planets and Earth signs, Venus, Neptune, and Uranus, and Taurus, Mercury and Capricorn, Mars and Virgo. What's important here is not that that's Earth, but that there are a lot of midpoint structures. See all these arrows? Like there's an arrow from Venus to Mercury and from Mars to Mercury. That means Mercury's at the Venus-Mars midpoint, 37 minutes. And if you follow these arrows around, Mars has an arrow from Uranus and from also from Mercury. Mars is at Mercury-Uranus midpoint. Neptune is up opposite Mercury, Mars. Notice that with all of these, we can add one more planet and get another midpoint. Mercury, Venus, Mars shares Mercury and Mars with Neptune and shares Mercury and Mars with this. So this is Mercury and Mars with Venus, Mercury and Mars with Uranus, Mercury and Mars with Neptune. Same two planets being shared. We have one, two, three midpoint structures from five planets. That's a supersymmetry pattern. It means we're getting a lot of midpoints just by adding one more planet. And, they disc and there are a lot of trines going on here. They're all kind of trying each other. Mercury's weekly trine, Venus, and uh, Mars is weekly trine, Neptune, a little bit of trine -y type stuff going on. And it's all midpoints, nothing real hard. And there's your fluid, easygoing, natural capability to move into different lifestyles and not to become too... Uh, uh, narrowly identified with any one of them, but enjoying them and the need to embrace a new narrative and not get stuck in any one fixed story. Keep learning about new stories of, of people and having an empathy and engagement with them. So there it is. There's a, a strong 17 vibration, more fluid, more based on midpoints and weak trines, and that's the style of what's happening. Okay, so concluding comments and summary. 17 Vibe shows our interest in the stories that are beyond the scope of what we were born into. That's the essential thing. But that interest in stories leads to more things than we realized at first. At first we saw it with acting. Then we saw it with theater. We saw it with literature. Then we noticed it with empathy. All of these counselors, 
a lot of astrologers, uh, empathic sensitives, 17 vibration. Then we noticed it with performers, especially singers who, like actors, are carried away. You know, they drift away with this storyline and this vibration and this mood of the music. And now we see it also with an emphasis on fluidly moving into alternative configurations in your life, different personalities in your life. And uh, also, just to repeat, Uranus and Neptune get involved, adds this feeling of magic, of freshness, of excitement, of enthusiasm, and it makes the alternative storyline irresistible. Because Uranus and Neptune are irresistible. To be awake, to be alive, to be fresh, to step outside the humdrum world, and it creates these alter egos that we can express through acting, through performing, or just different environments in which we can reconfigure ourselves. Well, that's it, my friends. Uh, just another video on the way that a particular vibration, in this case we're focusing on 17 vibration, how it gets expressed, how we see it in the lives of people, and, and what it's doing. Uh, thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.